Good morning, folks, family, and extended family. Welcome to my studio here this morning. It's Saturday morning, and uh, so we are ready to do our 10 plus 10 at 10 live. Uh, it was a beautiful morning early this morning right here. This is the east at my window, and the sun started up right there in my window, and then the clouds came in and kind of took that away from me this morning, but hope you are doing your best as we're sheltering at home. Of course, Governor Pritzker, as we all know, came out with more strict guidelines for us, so let's honor those. We are to be in obedience to our government leaders, and so that's what we will try to do. To that end, uh, Chuck and I have been almost like uh, husband and wife this past week, so we have been close to each other not close, we're used to staying our distance, but so it most likely is just going to be Chuck and I uh, trying to do worship in the morning, and uh, we wanted to have our elder board there, but we feel like that's probably not wise given our newest lockdown protocol, uh, so we'll go forward uh, with that, and just praying for just a, a miraculous stop to the coronavirus, to the epidemic, all of that, and God will answer our prayers. Hallelujah. I did want to say yesterday I had this very special hat on. And that is from Sam Turbeck. He gave me that. Just as a reminder of the greatest team uh, in recent memory. Uh, the Chicago Cubs world champion team. I uh, want you to have happy thoughts uh, each day. Think about how you can do that. Uh, so spring is coming. We're one day closer to it today. I have my... Uh, mushrooming stick with me today. That makes me very happy. It has been with me. Uh, it was with me when I found that four and a half pounds under one tree a few years ago. I found about four pounds under a tree a few years ago. It was with me when Noah and I uh, found that huge batch uh, that year. Noah had his own mushroom stick that Larry Piper had made him, uh, but he out while we're mushrooming he's whacking it against the trunks of trees and he broke it and so now he has no mushroom stick and so no happy memory there but I also wanted to show you this kind of will help help you all well, just let me drop putting this up here just a little bit closer for you yeah those are our two little baby mushrooms that we keep here at the house and the grandkids and uh, we love to play hide the mushroom and uh, just reminds us year around. Yeah, they still have just a little bit of that mushroom smell to them. Anyway, well, we need to get going, don't we? So uh, let's do that. And uh, wanted to just also mention uh, I'll be using my special Oaks travel cup today. It has a nice Oaks logo on it, as you can see. Now, most of you don't have one of these. Uh, these are we kind of reserve for just the most immediate Oaks staff, but I'm wondering if maybe we need to expand that uh, just a little bit. And I'm thinking, you know, if you send a gift of any size to the Oaks Community Church, uh, we will see if we can maybe arrange to get you one of these beautiful uh, travel mugs with the Oaks logo on it. Just that, a gift of any size to the Oaks Community Church, 1868 Congregation Road, Dehinda, Illinois, 61428. And you can send check, money order, uh, chickens, cows, eggs, uh, figs, uh, jewelry, 1824 karat gold, any of those kind of things. Uh, we will gladly accept uh, here. And uh, I don't know, maybe we'll actually do that. Joni can maybe keep track and we'll, we'll see. Anyway, let's get into work. Ready? John chapter 8, one of my very favorites and uh, one of my favorite sermons I've ever preached uh, came from John uh, chapter 8, the story of the adulterous woman. Many of you have heard that sermon. It's even up, I believe, on our app for membership class called No More Stones. Let's read our way through it here, and it's a fairly long chapter, 59 verses, so it'll take us a little bit to work through it. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives is just over to the east of the temple, across, the, I think, the Kidron Valley there it's called. Early in the morning, he came again into the temple. All the 
people were coming to him. And he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. And having set her in the center of the court, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery in the very act. Now on the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. What then do you say? And of course, the question we're all asking ourselves is, where's the man? Caught in the act. It takes two to tango, right? Well, the whole thing's uh, kind of a sham anyway uh, with them trying to trap Jesus. Verse 6. They were saying this, testing him, so that they might have grounds for accusing him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. But when they persisted in asking him, he straightened up and said to him, He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. So no stones are going to get thrown on this day, are they? Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they began to go out one by one, beginning with the older ones, the most sinful, we would assume. And he was left alone, and the woman where she was in the center of the court. Now, what an incredible scene this would be. All of them have dropped their stones and left. And here Jesus is with her. Straightening up, Jesus said to her, Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Those are beautiful words. I love the translation that says, neither do I. But he does say, go. From now on, sin no more. He calls her out in her sin, tells her, uh, go for it. I don't condemn you either. He came to save those who are lost, right? And the sinners. He came to save sinners. And so he offers his uh, salvation to her. Go and sin no more, though. Don't keep doing that. And there's brackets here. Uh, verses 1 through uh, 11 are, are bracketed, which means they're not in the oldest Greek manuscripts. Uh, but uh, there's no reason to believe this is not... Uh, well, I do believe with all my heart this, this happened exactly as it is recorded here. Uh, so, uh, and I love preaching on that, that passage. Does anyone condemn you? Neither do I. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 12, Then Jesus again spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You're testifying about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, Even if I testify about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from and where I'm going, but you do not want know where I come from or where I'm going. You judge according to the flesh. I'm not judging anyone. But even if I do judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone in it, but I and the Father who sent me. Even in your law it has been written that the testimony of two men is true. I am he who testifies by, about myself and the Father who sent me testifies about me. And we know there are a, two of the cases at least where the Father from heaven said, this is my beloved Son. Listen to him. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So we have those two different uh, affirmations from the Father. So they were saying to him, where is your Father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father also, these words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no one seized him, because from below I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die. And that has never changed uh, to this very day. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be forgiven of your sins. 
the wages of death lifted from us. Hallelujah. So they were saying to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What have I been saying to you from the beginning? I have many things to speak and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true. And the things which I heard from him, these I speak to the world. They did not realize that he had been speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he. And I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak these things as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. As he spoke these things, many came to believe in him. I pray that if I was there, if you were there, we get in right now. And these promises of, of Jesus being lifted up, we will know, we would know that we know who he is, what he is doing, and that he is following the Father's will. And the Father be with us just as he is with Jesus. He's not left me alone. I always do the things that are pleasing to him. No, we're not Jesus. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, we can live those verses as well. And I pray that you do and that you are, especially these times. Verse 31. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed in him. Now he's talking to those who believe. If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. You ought to circle that in your Bible. Big if. Jesus uses if a lot. We're going to see a whole lot more of them here towards the end of the chapter. Which, by the way, occurs, if occurs 1,441 times in your Bible. I remember Linda Burris always knew the answer to that whenever I said that uh, in a sermon. And she would yell that out. 1,441 ifs in Scripture in the NASB Bible. Now, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Do not quote verse 32 out of context. The only way to know the truth, and the truth be set free by the truth, is to continue in his word. That's the, that's the connection. So as we follow his word, as we obey his word, as we continue in his word, then that truth of his word will set us free. Hallelujah. I may be trapped or cooped up in my house right now, but I am free indeed in my heart and in my spirit. Nothing, no vir no nothing is going to take that away from me. I pray the same for all of you uh, in your homes right now. They answered him, verse 33, we are Abraham's descendants and have never yet been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Let that sink into the depths of your heart and your being right now. That freedom that comes, I am set free through the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that you're Abraham's descendants, Jesus says, yet you seek to kill me. Because my word has no place in you. I speak the things which I have seen with my father. Therefore you also do the things which you heard from your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if, <laughs> the ifs are just coming, aren't they? If you are Abraham's children, do the deeds of Abraham. But as it is, you are seeking to kill me. A man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God, this Abraham did not do. You are doing the deeds of your father. They said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. They're proud, for sure. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and have come from God. For I have not even come on my own initiative. But he sent me. Why do you not understand what I am saying? It is because you cannot hear my words. Now here we come to a verse that you probably ought to circle again because we're going to hear the definition of the devil. You are of your father, the devil. And you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning 
and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. We should, must never forget that and that the devil is working in these ways all the time, this moment. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I speak truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears the words of God. For this reason, you do not hear them, because you are not of God. So all this stuff is spiritually discerned uh, for us. Let's receive it. It's spiritually re uh, uh, received. So we've got to have the Spirit of God. you got to invite the Spirit of God in as we read His Word right now that this comes and flows into us. A lot of stuff here. A lot of different stuff going on. Not going to understand every bit of it, uh, every single part, but just let it, get, let it get in our hearts. Receive it. We'll receive more and more each time we read it, listen to it. Verse 48, the Jews answered and said to him, do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. But I not, do not seek my glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. But folks, you got, we've got to know his word. Amen? That's the, we can't keep it if we don't know it. So praise God for 10 plus 10. This little, little times like this, we get more and more of his word in us. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, and the prophets also. And you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste of death. Surely you are not greater than our father Abraham who died. The prophets died too. Whom do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. And you have not come to know it, but I know him. And if I say that I do not know him, I will be a liar like you, but I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. That's a bit mysterious, isn't it? But Jesus, uh, he goes back into time as well as now moving forward into time, uh, his, uh, his incarnation. It's a beautiful, mysterious uh, how he transcends all time. Verse 57. So the Jews said to him, You're not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Get ready. Verse 58. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. Oh my. That takes us back to the Exodus, to the burning bush. Moses says, who will I tell people you are? And God says, tell them I am who I am. In the Greek here, it's ego eimi, I am. And for a Jew to hear Jesus say that would be the most incredible messianic statement that could ever be uttered in two words. I am. Jesus was in the burning bush. He was the manifestation of God in the burning bush to, to Moses. He goes back now even to Abraham. He goes back all the way to Jesus has literally taken the entire scripture and incarnated it into himself. Hallelujah. You can't get enough Jesus. We can't read enough about Jesus. We can't learn enough about Jesus, can we? We just keep reading, keep seeking, keep letting him just pour into you. That's why we read the Old Testament too. It's about Jesus. It's pouring to Jesus. All of it to Jesus because he is, I am who I am. He is the I am. Amen? 
and of course all of his red letters here just read absorb and all the, the black letters too of all those who are writing about him as spirit filled spirit inspired writers of the scripture verse 59 here we go this is it now uh, from this time forward where he just proclaimed himself to be god verse 59 therefore they picked up stones to throw at him but jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. He has a divine protection over him until the time has come. But from this point on, they will be seeking. The, the Jews, the scribes, the Pharisees, those people who do not believe, will be out to get him. And so we take it up a notch uh, from here on. Amen. Amen. Praise God for John chapter 8. This beautiful chapter. I know, uh, I mean, go read it yourself, and that maybe some of that helps a little bit. I hope it does. And I hope that you'll just make the best out of this day. Uh, get outside, maybe take a little walk. Um, just looking forward to uh, continuing our journey uh, through through the scriptures and chapter a day, 10 plus 10. Now you got to go in and do your 10. I don't know how long that took me, probably too long. Uh, but Got to do your other part of your 10 to prayer time. Thanks for being with me. Let's pray. Let's pray a little bit. Thank you, Lord, for John chapter 8. Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful encounter with this woman caught in adultery, what it teaches us. It teaches us not to throw stones. Pray that we don't. Pray that we just be instruments of your grace and mercy as well. Teachers, though, of your truth to go and sin no more. Thank you for all the rest, Lord, just the freedom that we have in you, Jesus, as we obey you and seek your truth, as we acknowledge that you are God, that you are God the Son, fully and forever. We believe and we thank you for that freedom, that the difference, the security that that belief makes in all of our hearts. We pray it be so to the fullest this day. Help us make the most of this day in our homes. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Praying and hoping to see you tonight at 7 o'clock.